Hello everyone and a very good morning. Distinguished delegates, presenters and participants from SAG member states and other regions around the globe. It gives me a great pleasure to extend you all a very warm welcome on behalf of SARC Energy Center. I'm very thankful to all of you for joining us in the SARC webinar on future of air conditioning in buildings. My name is Ehsanullah Marwat and I am working at SARC Energy Center as Research Fellow Energy Efficiency. I shall be moderating today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, Conditioning systems in buildings contribute to greenhouse gas emissions, both directly through refrigerant emissions as well as indirectly through fossil fuel combustion for power generation. Growth in global air conditioning is likely to further cause the climate damage. The air conditioning industry is working hard to innovate on the next generation of refrigerants with lower global warming potential, GWPs to reduce direct environmental impacts while also improving system efficiency to reduce indirect impacts. To discuss future interventions and upcoming technologies in air conditioning systems, a SARC Energy Center is organizing this webinar on future of air conditioning in buildings. In this webinar, we will discuss next generation air conditioning systems, advances in air conditioning system efficiency and global warming contributions. I'm extremely thankful to our elite panel of presenters, including Dr. Adil Vakas, who is Associate Professor at National University of Science and Technology, and Mr. Vakas Saleri, who is Facility Specialist at Queensway Carlton Hospital, Ottawa, Canada, for their enthusiasm and eager willingness to participate in our webinar. I'll sh I shall introduce them in detail before the start of their relevant sessions. Dear participants, you can ask questions to presenters by typing your questions or by clicking the raise hand options into the attendees pane of the main window of GoToWebinar software. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentations. We will collect these and address them during the question and answer session at the end of each presentation. Additionally, additionally, you will also have a chance to share your views in the knowledge sharing session of the webinar. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we let's start with formal presentation. Our first presenter is Dr. Adil Vakas, Associate Professor at National University of Science and Technology, NESC, Pakistan. Dr. Adil Vakas is PhD in Energy Technology from Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand, and his postdoc from Chinese Academy of Science in Thermal Energy Engineering. He did his MS from University of Applied Sciences, Offenburg, Germany, and BE Mechanical Engineering from UET Lahore. He has vast experience in solar water heating, solar space heating, and energy efficiency measures in industry and buildings. He is author of several research articles in well-reputed international energy journals and conferences. So I may request Dr. Adil Vakas to share his research on next generation air conditioning system. Over to you, sir. Hello everyone and very warm welcome to this series of webinars. I hope everyone listening to this webinar will be safe and healthy from the ongoing COVID-19. And I, I wish that everyone keep healthy. Okay. First of all, um, the topic today that, that it's assigned the future of air conditioning in the buildings and I'm Dr. Adil Wakas. I am uh, heading here. I'm working at, as an associate professor and uh, acting dean of the US Pakistan Center for Advanced Studies in Energy at National Science and National University of Science and Technology in Nast, Islamabad, Pakistan. These are the contents that I will be covering during my uh, 
presentation. There is an overview and the air conditioning and the related electricity consumption in uh, different countries out of the world, especially in the SARC region. Air conditioning related greenhouse gas emissions, commonly used air conditioning systems that are being used these days in the buildings. Air conditioning selection and the sizing of for the buildings, high performance building design so that we can reduce the cooling loads and air conditioning and the and its uh, and the and its contribution in the global warming passive and low energy air conditioning option for the buildings that can be an, an alternate of the compressor based technologies and then we have the conclusions and then the <clears throat> the average temperature of the earth during the july 2019 was about one centigrade above the 20th century average according to uh, national ocean and atmosphere administration usa and it makes the warmest month on record and actually it was the last five years have been the four uh, five warmest years and they're using air conditioning and electric fans to make us cool it makes about 20 percent of the total energy consumed in the buildings around the world or we can say that 10 percent of the global electricity consumption growing cooling demand is impacting the power generation and distribution capacity especially during the peak big demand periods and the extreme heat waves that we suffer especially during the SARC region Space cooling in the building accounts for 50% of residential peak electricity demand as demonstrated by the daily peaks in China, Beijing during the summer heat wave of 2017. And the warmer temperature, there has a direct impact on the electricity consumption for air conditionings. For example, one degree rise increases about 50% of the air conditioning usage. Carbon dioxide emissions, that are related to the space cooling are also expanding rapidly, tripling, it has tripled between 1990-2018 about 1130 million tons. Despite that there are a lot of improvement in the average air conditioning performance in the power six of carbon intensity. And it also causes the local air pollution emissions related to the high cooling demand on rise. And one of the major phenomena is the uh, local heats that developed due to the extensive usage of the air conditioning. And to remove those heat, we again use the air conditioners to make us cool down. <clears throat> this is a chart that showing that the share of air conditioning in the household electricity usage. AC air conditioning consumption of the 20 most prosperous countries has increased about 400 day of work hours over the last three years between 2015 2018 as the temperatures have been on the every six percent higher than the normal cooling period this excesses excess consumption it is equal to the presently air consumption of the buildings in africa that we are using the how much air conditioning we are using and the consumption of electricity for household air conditioner is growing very rapidly in half of the G20 countries that you can see here that I have uh, I have shown in the chart that in, in even in Saudi Arabia about 60 percent of the electricity used in household is used by the air conditioning and if we talk about uh, India in India it is about 18 to 90 percent of household electricity is used for the air conditioning by more than uh, by more than 20 percent per year over 2000 to 18 in china and india indonesia and turkey and in average and in the range of six to ten percent per annum increase in australia brazil canada eu and saudi arabia and south korea so this chart it shows that how much of electricity household electricity is used by the air conditioning Maximum is in the in the Saudi Arabia where where about seven near nearly about eighty percent we can say that are used for the air conditioning purpose. Yes, this is an uh, this is very interesting that 
air conditioning today is concentrated in a small number of countries but ac sales air conditioning sales are rising very rapidly in the emerging economies emerging economies we can say in the south countries like india pakistan bangladesh they are the emerging economies so air conditioning is increasing very rapidly most homes at this moment most homes in these countries they have not yet purchased their first air conditioners for example in this figure you can see that the percentage of households equipped with ac in the selected countries here on the y axis you see the percentage and in the x axis you can see that the number of countries for example if i go for the uh, first country that is this is a japan about 90% about 90% of the japanese houses are equipped with the acs at the same time when i come for the emerging economies like india and indonesia still many people many houses they don't have their first air conditioners so see that when when these economies and they are the uh, uh, occupants of the houses they, they start buying their air conditioners what will happen to the air, air conditioning consumption in the second chart here there is a projection that major contribution will come from the india and the china when they will buy their air conditioning and it says that by 2050 around two third of the world household could have their own air conditioner which they don't have at this moment china indonesia and india will together account for half of the total number of the air conditioners This is the data taken from the Japanese Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Industry Air Association that has summarized the estimated results of 218 air conditioners demand in the main countries around the world. According, according to their data, 2018 world AC demand is estimated to reach 110 million units. I repeat again that in 2018, world AC air conditioning demand is estimated to reach 110 million units. The largest market is China, whose demand and occupies 40.2% of the total energy demand, and their and their demand will be reached to 44.63 million units. So you can see that how much big is the Chinese market for from the air conditioning point of view. And the second largest market is Asia, excluding the Japan and the China, whose demand is about to reach 17.82 million units. And the third largest market is the North America, where the demand can reach about 15 points, about 15.6 million units. And when I talk about the SAR countries, here the chart shows that AC demand for houses, buildings, and other structures within the SAR countries. The major consumer is the India. In India, about 5,000 units, uh, 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 five, uh, you, you can say 5 uh, million units AC demand is approximately for India. And for Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka is there. And in the previous slide, I have shown you that in this is the demand is coming when major portion of the household still don't have their the don't have purchased their first unit of air conditioning and thus see that how the scenario will change when then uh, income of the people will increase and they will go to buy their first unit of air conditioning unit this is this slide shows the estimated air conditioning stock stock in the selected regions uh, on the xx uh, on the y axis they are the units in the uh, million units and uh, on on the y axis is the number of eight, and they have taken uh, the data for the united states japan and korea china and asian countries we see that the demand is very constant for the united states uh, the lowest uh, blue, uh, uh, the lowest uh, light blue, and the major demand is increasing from the China, and, and you can see the Asian, other Asian countries, their demand is also increasing. But the major demand is coming from the China and the Asian countries, and the rest of the world, you can see that, that their demand is not so steep.
air conditioning related uh, that was a little bit overview that how much air conditioning stocks are uh, or how much air conditioning demand will increase in different regions especially in the south countries and what will be the electricity conditions and now little bit about the air conditioning related emissions globally the stationary air conditioning systems that is to the buildings uh, not for the moving vehicles or something else account for nearly 700 million metric tons of direct and indirect co2 emissions when we talk about the direct and the indirect emissions it comes from the electricity usage electricity which is used to power these air conditioners and from the uh, refrigerants uh, from the refrigerants that is used in the air conditioning the emissions due to that one in indirect emissions from the electricity generation account for approximately 17 74% of this total with with direct, direct emissions of hydrofluorocarbons and hydrochlorofluorocarbon refrigerant account for 70% and 19% represent, uh, respectively. While the electricity consumption is the largest driver of the greenhouse gas emissions from air conditioning, indirect impacts and emissions of the uh, refrigerants, which includes hydrochlorofluorocarbons and uh, hydrofluorocarbons, Refrigerants have a large global warming impact relative to their mass. We will discuss it in detail. This is just a one slide. We will discuss in, in discuss it in the coming slide. Addressing the direct emissions, therefore, is an important part to reducing the air conditioning related greenhouse gas emissions. Air conditioning and the electricity consumption. The, the pie chart here shows that the share of global electricity demand grew 2015. Without an action to address the energy efficiency and energy demand for the space cooling will more than triple by 2050. The space cooling will occupy the 37% of the electricity demand, while the heating of the houses will take only 12%. So the major portion of the electricity for the houses will be going towards the space cooling whether it is asia whether it is europe whether it is north america or the south american countries so we have so more major research it should continue from the it should come from the reducing the space cooling demand the problem is that today's consumers are not buying the most efficient air conditioners the average efficiency of the air conditioners sold today is less than half of what is typically available on the shelves most energy efficient air conditioners which are available in the market they are either expensive or yes the uh, cost is the major, uh, major part that the least expensive air conditioners they are the least expensive and and the buyers and the consumers they, they find it easy to to get their first ac that is very non inefficient Factors that affecting the actual usage of the air conditioners. There are the several factors that has been characterized here for the usage of air conditioners and their impact on the electricity consumption. The number of air conditioned rooms. The most common practice that we that is in the south countries that we use the center uh, that we use the split air conditioners rather than the central air conditioning, and we use it in the in in one room two rooms. It depends on the usage temperature setting. We can use the, okay, in India, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, we can see that outside is 35 degrees centigrade, and we can choose the temperature of the room. It, is, it can be 20 degrees centigrade, it can be 22 degrees centigrade, it can be 26 degrees centigrade, and it depends on the consumer. But the higher temperatures set inside the air conditioned room, it saves more electricity. Like here, it is mentioned that the, going from the temperature of 22 degrees centigrade to 26 degrees centigrade of the air conditioning space decrease the electricity consumption about 50 percent when all things when all other things are equal it means that there is the no the, when the, there are the same rooms and you are using the air conditioning in one room the temperature you said 22 degree and in 
another temp room you set the temperature 26 degrees centigrade it decreases the electricity consumption around 50 percent number of powers usage yes this is uh, this is another effect that depends on the occupants that how they use the air conditioning and how many hours they are using it can be one hour two hour three hour night times during the midday times it depends on them that how they are using and it directly affect their electricity uh, electricity bills now the current air con air conditioning systems that are being used by the buildings in the current scenario the the type of air conditioning they are uh, we can uh, divide the air conditioning system in the three types they are the electrically operated they are the thermally operated and they are the hybrid electrically operated there can be a vapor compression cycle and then depending on the other refrigerants they can be the air based they can be the carbon dioxide based and they can be the thermoelectric based and the thermally operated where the major uh, in electrically operated air conditioning systems electricity is the major uh, electricity takes the major role in, in in the operation of these air conditioning systems and in the thermally operated air conditioning systems thermal energy heat it plays a major role in operation of these air conditioning systems while while uh, electricity is takes the minor portion in the hybrid we can hybrid we can say that it can be the heat electricity it can be the solar biomass or the solar or the natural gas this one is explained here also electricity is the high grade energy and the thermal energy is the low grade energy we will discuss it further also the vast majority of the air conditioning that is being used in the building that is the electrically operated air conditioners that are the vapor compression based refrigeration cycle however the designs and the configuration differ from world to meet the different market needs for example in asia most of the uh, houses they use the ductless split ac systems as shown in the figure below i have shown here in the figure below for the residential and the compression applications wherever in the in the united states ductic systems and the geo, and the room air conditioner we what we call the window air conditioners they are mostly used and uh, the duct, i have shown here the window ac also and the simple portable ac with a small duct these are the mostly used in the here i have classified different type of air conditioning system that are being used their advantages their disadvantages and the cost first is the central air conditioning system its life is about 15 to 20 years central air conditioning systems circulate the cool air through the system of supply and the return ducts supply ducts and the resistors they carry the cool air from one from the air conditioner to the other places of the home central air conditioning can be the bus best option if whole building is to be cool means their every room is to be cool the system is virtually invisible so if you are very particular about your decor this may be the better option the major disadvantages of using this uh, central air conditioning system that it can cost you more its uh, initial cost can be more and uh, early base re uh, repair and maintenance can be the issues and you have to use you have to clean the air filters and during the covid 19 you have seen that the central air conditioning systems they are uh, not so advantage because uh, they can uh, circulate the one uh, room uh, they, they can circulate the air of one room into the into the another room so they can be the disadvantage of such scenarios the second system is the split system that we normally use its life is 12 to 15 years mounted on the wall a ductless a mini split air conditioner provides it provides you the uh, cooling for the special room means you want to uh, air condition one room you can use this type of the air conditioner it is easy to install 
easy to maintain, avoid losses, little the ducts, quite efficient, and maintain the air indoor quality and reduce the energy bills. They are very efficient because there are the less energy losses due to the duct systems. It's initially the, because the, they are uh, very efficient, their initial investment can be very high because if you want to air condition every room and you want to purchase three to four air conditioners for your for your house, they can be initially, they can be very expensive. And also there needs to be, a, and they are exposed on the, on the wall and there needs to be a way to drain out the, uh, the water that it generates. And it can be a little bit expensive if that net, duct network is available. And the third type is the room and the portable air conditioners, very common in the United States. Their life is about 10 to 15 years, provided the spot cooling can be a window unit or the portable, depending on the usage. Much more powerful in controlling the temperature, filtering the air, and circulating the clean air into the home. Not very much efficient, but they are very least expensive, very easy to buy. Electricity bills can be very high and they can be noisy operations as you have seen. But in the Asia, they are getting, uh, uh, they are not, uh, their usage is decreasing with the passage of time in Asian countries. There is a new technology, which are these are inverter and the non-inverter DC air conditioners. They are very efficient. They reduce they uh, they can reduce your bills and I will a little bit explain about that how they can differ from the inverter and the non-inverter air conditioner. The biggest difference between the inverter and the non-inverter air conditioning is the fact that the motor of the inverter compressor has a variable speed, and the speed of the non-inverter compressor is fixed. This means that it operates either at a full speed or the minimum speed. It means the non-inverters. You have the only two options either it run at the minimum speed or it must run at the maximum speed a sensor but the a sense but there's a sensor in the inverter air conditioner that adjusts the power according to the temperature in the room in the uh, non-inverter air conditioners the compressors when it reaches its the design temperature it shut downs and when is Temperature rises above the design temperature, the compressor starts. But the, in, in the non-inverter air conditioner, the compressor never stops. It has the grades, variable speeds. When it reaches the design temperature, its speeds slows down. And when it the temperature of the room raises up, the speed of the compressor motor, it increases step by step, step by step. That's why it, 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 it does not go at the highest speed or the lowest speed. So as the compressor motor of the inverter air conditioner does not turn on and off all the time, but keeps working at the low power, the operation is the very quiet because you cannot listen to the jerk that it gives when it switch on the compressors. The inverter AC is able to heat or cool the room faster than the non-inverter. This is due to the fact that the, in the beginning of the process, the inverter air conditioner, they uses more power than the non-inverter air conditioners and, and demands the power when it gets close to the desired temperature. So the non-inverter uh, non air conditioners, they consumes less energy as compared to the other air conditioners. This is the diagram which shows that the, how the compressor works. In the, at the left side of the uh, slide, you can see this uh, diagram. That in the, the first, uh, the above diagram is for the non-inverter air conditioners and the lower diagram is for the, air, for the inverter air conditioners. And you can see that how the compressor is working in the inverter air conditioner and in the non-inverter air conditioners. In the non in the non-inverter air condition in the inverter air conditioners, the starting power of the compressor is higher as compared to the non-inverter air conditioners, but the rest you can see. So 
what are the advantages and the disadvantages of using the inverter air conditioners and the non inverter air conditioners it is displayed here they use the i i have shown you the uh, inverter air conditioner they use the variable speed compressors while the non inverter air conditioner they use the fixed or the single speed compressors inverter air conditioner slows down and the speeds up according to the uh, temperature where, where in the non inverter air conditioners uh, the compressors on or off according to the selected temperature the initial cost is very high for the inverter and the initial cost for the non inverter is little bit and the rest is fresh here you can read it yes inverter air conditioners they are more environmental friendly both from the refrigerant point of view both from the and from the electricity consumption point of view can tell you that in, in in pakistan inverter air conditioners are getting more attention of the users because of the their quiet operation they can provide heating and cooling at the both time and the electricity bill is reduced uh, about 30 to 50 percent of electricity bills can be reduced by using the inverter type air conditioners yes this Next two slides will show you about the sizing of the air selection and the sizing of the air conditionings for the buildings. Air conditionings, they are rated by the British thermal units, BTUs. Normally, when you purchase your AC, this is 12,000 BTUs, 18,000 BTUs, and 12,000 BTUs is equal to the one ton. So if somebody says, or you want to buy a one ton air conditioner unit, they, you can say that it is equal to the 12,000 BTUs per hour. And each building, when selecting the air conditioning, the criteria for uh, for each building is different, and design conditions can differ greatly between the regions to region. But the factors that should be countries that should be considered when buying the air conditioning, they, they can be the climatic conditions. In which climatic conditions you are buying the air conditions? It is the very hot, very hot and humid, or the little bit cooler temperatures. Expensive usage of the glass, particularly in the in the south orientations, because in uh, in the northern hemisphere the sun always moves in the southern direction. So, so we have to make sure that the, 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 the southern part of the building it should have the least windows, ceiling rising. How much? Because if you increase the ceiling height, the total area that should be cooled it can increase outside air requirements especially because when there's a occupant loads the outside air temperature that it can affect directly the condition zone Heating equipments which equipments are being used in the condition space they are the computers they are the fax machines or they are there there is a refrigerator placed or there is a tv placed in that that should be kept in mind lighting the lighting can give an external then another heating load because in every light it produces the heat and that heat is a burden on your air conditioning system because air conditioning systems has to cool down there uh, that that heat also incandescent bulbs that are being phased out but they they are still being used in most of the south countries so air condition uh, those bulbs they generate a lot of heat and uh, we have to make sure that uh, when we when we choose the air conditioning we can replace these bulbs with the most efficient bulbs that don't produce much heat but every lightings they produce the heats and we have to take care of that heat when we size our air conditioning systems in general air conditioning requirements are higher for hot and humid regions and lower in the in in the cooler places This is the chart given by the uh, Energy Star website taken from the Energy Web, uh, website, and it shows that what is the uh, how much BTU per hour or the tons of air conditioning you required for your building. For example, if the uh, if, if the area of the building is 100 to 150 square feet, you need 5,000 BTUs per hour. If your area, if your building area is 150 to 150 square feet, you may need the 6,000 BTU per uh, per hour, and and the rest is shown here. And here it is shown that if the room is heavily shaded, there are the shades like these are there, or the roof is shaded, 
with something else or there's a double story building then you can reduce the capacity by the 10 percent and the, if the if, if the room is very sunny you can increase the capacity by 10 percent if more than two people are there you can increase the 600 BTU per hour for each additional person. So the requirements are given here. It is available on the Energy Star website also. So before uh, selecting your air conditioner, we can reduce the cooling load and we can reduce the cooling load by reducing the heat transfer through the building envelope by the conduction radiation and the infiltration that reduces the need that can reduce the need for an air conditioning system to reject the heat which is being introduced in the room to the condition space and can reduce the overall cooling load and can reduce the air conditioning requirements for example if your building is not insulated you may need much air conditioning and if your building is insulated you can reduce the cooling load and the insulation can be increased by increasing the thickness or the r value of the walls to reduce the heat gains from outside windows can be the uh, high energy efficient build, uh, buildings that can have the air gap in between that can reduce the uh, temperatures of the, that can uh, reduce the effect of the outside air temperatures in the inside rooms and the Thermal bridges. Thermal bridges means that eliminate the gaps in the building insulation that can allow the increased conduction from outside from the building. Roof, 70% of heat is coming the, from the roof. If the roof can be insulated, the overall air conditioning requirement can be reduced. Surface orientation. If your building is, surf, is oriented towards the south side, it, uh, you may increase the uh, overall air conditioning load overall, and you can reduce the overall increase. Uh, Air conditioning load if the building is rightly oriented infiltrations door spaces window spaces a lot of outside air can come inside the room of the air conditioning that can be reduced by the proper uh, uh, sizing of the windows and insulating the windows and the door spaces to reduce the, uh, the outside air Okay, studies conducted in the hot and humid climates found potential annual cooling load reduction up to 38% for the only, in, it means that if you can improve the insulation of the buildings in of the rooms that you need to be conditioned, you can reduce the overall cooling load 30% and up to 12% by reduction, if there's an external shedding you can produce, 12% can be reduced. Solar glazing can reduce up to 20%. So these are the measures that can be taken to reduce the overall cooling load. And increasing the efficiency of the lighting and other appliances that give off the heat, you can reduce the cooling load. For example, waste heat that can come from the lighting and appliances. Install LED lights with occupancy sensors to maintain the lighting due to the building occupants by reducing the waste heat and the appliances that can generate the heat that can also be replaced with the, with the more efficient that produce the less heat. Okay, air conditioning related global warming contributions. Air conditioning system that can con contribute to the global warming through direct and indirect greenhouse gas emissions. Direct emissions occur when the refrigerant escapes from the air conditioning system into the atmosphere during the initial charging, servicing, and end life of disposal and other events. And the indirect emissions, as I told before, result from the fossil fuel combustion to generate the electricity to, to, operate, to, to operate the air conditioning system. Electricity consumption throughout the useful life of a system is the largest driver of the greenhouse gas emissions from the air conditioning systems as compared to the direct, direct emissions. Refrigerant is a compound typically found in the either in the fluid or the gaseous state. It absorbs the heat from the environment that is and can provide the refrigeration when combined with the other components such as the compressors and the evaporators. Key elements to achieve the near-term reduction the climate impacts for the air conditioning including include the replacing the current generation of the hydrofluorocarbon refrigerants with the low global warming potential refrigerants to the phase down under the Montreal protocol. 
or domestic regulation comes into uh, use and restricting the emissions during the initial starting of the refrigerant or the during the servicing of the air conditioning. The most okay, sorry. The most common refrigerant that are used for the air conditioning over the years that include the chlorofluorocarbons, including the R12, this is known as to contribute to the greenhouse gas effect production. Its production for the new stocks has been ceased since 1994. Hydrofluorocarbons, including R22, slightly less damaging to the ozone than R12, but the uh, EPA has still mandated to phase out the result for, from the Clean Air Act. So R22 will phase out completely during the 2020. Hydrofluorocarbons that includes R410A and R134 with no chlorine in the mix. This is the safer for the environment and this is now called R410 is currently being used in the, in the, in, in the most efficient air conditioning systems in place of R22. Transition to low global warming potential refrigerants could can eliminate the majority of the direct emissions and can significantly reduce the air conditioning based greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, in the table below, I have shown the first generation, second generation, third generation, and the fourth generation air conditioning refrigerants. We can go directly towards the, the first generation. Refrigerants, it means it shows that whatever work that was used between 1830 to 1930, it includes the hydrochloro, uh, HC's hydrochloro, uh, hydrochlorine carbon and NH3 and the carbon dioxide. Then the sec second generation between 1931 to 1990, CFCs, HCFCs, that include R12, R32. And the third generation ozone protection was there and hydrofluorocarbons are used and the fourth generation global warming it which is a, which is our future and the hydrofluorocarbons and hydrofluorocarbons and, and yes many countries have already transitioned to the third generation hydrofluorocarbon refrigerants that are non ozone depletion but their global warming potential is similar to cfcs and hcfcs but they are non ozone. They does not react with the ozone because they does not contain the chlorine. Any refrigerant that contain the chlorine, it is affecting the ozone. Yes, this is the table that describes CFCs. The ozone depletion is very high, and their global warming potential is very high. Hydrochlorofluorocarbons, they are. Ozone depletion is very low, but their global, global warming potential is very high. Hydro, hydrofluorocarbons, their ozone depletion is zero, but still their global warming potential is very high. Is, is high. And the uh, hydrofluorolefins, their global warming potential is zero, and their global warming potential is also less. And more research is going on this one. And hydrocarbons, zero negligible co2 is also being worked out as a refrigerant in many air conditioning system but it is still under the research phase in addition to advancing the low global warming pollution refrigerants the air conditioning industry has improved to the energy efficiency because if we increase the energy efficiency we can reduce the energy consumption that is used to uh, operate these air conditioning systems to, to, to the technology innovation and market transformation strategies Improving air conditioning system efficiency also reduce the indirection, indirect CO2 emissions caused by the electrical generation, which counts for the majority of the air conditioning climate impact. <clears throat> this is the scenario of the energy efficiency in the air conditioning systems. The average air conditioning uh, efficiency is uh, depend uh, is indicator is the SEER that is called the seasonal energy efficiency ratio for air conditioning installed globally and currently it was 3.5 in 2008 and it is about 4 in 2018 so they are getting more efficient in the in the chart below I have shown here the 
on the x axis it is it shows the seasonal energy efficiency ratio and the y axis there is the uh, countries that how much efficient uh, how much efficient air conditioning units are being used in those countries uh, when we see about the emerging uh, countries like like china and india in india very uh, air, the efficiency of the air conditioning being used is very low as compared to the europe as compared to the japan for example in india approximately the average air conditioner that is being used uh, it is about 3.5 to 4 uh, efficiency and at the same time in europe it is uh, about 5 to 6 uh, ser and in in the japan you you can see that about 8 the ser value is 8 it means the japanese and the europe they are using more air, more efficient air conditioning units as compared to the developing economies without major efficiency improvement to the cooling equipment electricity demand for cooling in the buildings could increase by as much as 60 percent globally by 2030 and yes uh, in in usa the carrier company it launched a new air conditioning unit in 2018 which which has the efficiency ratio of 12.3 that three times market average efficiency of the residential AC units bought in the United States. So you can see that the most efficient air conditioning unit that is being deployed in the, in the world has the efficient SER of 12.3. Now energy, purpose, uh, energy performance trends, trends in air conditioning system. Uh, the problem today is that consumers are not buying the most efficient air conditionings cooling will uh, the cooling of the uh, buildings it will drive the peak electricity demand especially in the hot countries most efficient air conditionings can reduce the, the new power plants to meet the peak power demand especially during the night time you can see that uh, in 2016 this is a, a scenario it is explaining that if we use the most efficient air conditioning units how the peak electricity demand will increase let's talk about the india first the, the, the uh, china in 2016 about about 15 uh, percent share is there uh, in the peak electricity demand and if it the things continue it can increase from the 15 to 17 percent and if they use the uh, most efficient uh, cooling systems the peak electricity demand in 2015 it can reduce to, well, to towards the 14 percent and similarly for for india we can see that currently in india 10 percent of the peak electricity load is from air conditioning systems and in 2050 if the same scenario continue the 40 to 50 for about 45 percent of the peak load will come from the air conditioning system and if they can use the efficient air cooling systems uh, approximately it, it can reduce to well, the 20 20 percent in 2050 so more efficient air conditioning system is the need of the time yes this is the how the investment is uh, slide i have explained before also now the alternate because most of the air conditioning systems being used today are the are compressor based technologies now we can go towards the, what are the low energy or the passive technologies of air conditioning systems we have the evaporative cooling we have the radiative cooling geothermal cooling and simple ventilative cooling ventilative cooling means during the night time when our when, when the ambient temperature drops for example in such areas the night time temperature can be the 40 degree centigrade and uh, sorry the daytime temperature can be the 40 and the night time can be the 20. then we can use the ventilative cooling in that case okay evaporative coolers, coolers are becoming very popular i can uh, show the picture the example from the pakistan also that most of the building they are employing the uh, evaporative coolers it consumes 70 percent less energy than the central air conditioner or the uh, or the vapor compression based air conditioning systems and 
okay it is not suitable for the humid conditions for humid conditions another solutions which are coupled with the evaporative cooling system that can that can be used and yes another disadvantage of using the evaporative cooling system the health experts says that the water poured in the because they use the water uh, for the working because the water poured in the evaporative coolers to keep the padding moist can become stagnant giving away to fungus and other infections evaporative cooling can be divided into two direct direct evaporative cooling and indirect evaporative cooling direct evaporative cooling is suitable for dry and the hot uh, and, and the hot climates while indirect evaporative cooling suitable for humid and the hot climates and the indirect evaporative cooling the system can be complicated compared to the direct evaporative cooling but its commercial availability is still uh, an issue a little bit about heat pumps heat pumps and general air conditioners they differ from each other the way they operate the only air conditioners can give only cooling but the heat pumps at the same time they can give you a cooling and the heating also heat pumps they are the thermally driven heat pumps they are the mechanically driven heat pumps mechanically driven heat pumps they use the electricity to drive the compressors and the thermally dr uh, driven heat pumps they use the heat and most common example is the absorption cooling type they use the hot water or the heat in the range of the 60 to 160 degrees centigrade and from the solar heat from the uh from from the waste heat available geothermal heat or the air and the flue gas from the combustion process this is general overview that i have included this this uh, slide and this is the cycle uh, you can go through this and uh, this is a very common that how the how the heat pumps work uh, i will not go through this because i am running off the time okay geothermal based heating and cooling outdoor temperature fluctuates with the changing seasons but the underground temperatures they don't change due to the insulating properties of the earth about 6 to 10 feet below the ground temperatures remain relatively constant the geothermal system which typically consists of the indoor handling called the earth loop or a pump to re-injection well kept lies on this constant temperature to provide the free energy for cooling and heating the pipes that are by the ground inside the ground that make up an earth loop are usually made of the polyethylene and can be buried under the ground horizontally or vertically depending on the working scenario in the figure i have shown you that the how geothermal can be useful for heating and cooling they use very less energy as compared to the conventional vapor based uh, cooling systems the main difference between the residential geothermal heating ventilation and air conditioning systems and the traditional air source hvac system is that it uses the earth's energy that is free instead of relying on the fuel produced to the heat to produce the heat this is i have summarized that how renewable energy heating and cooling of the buildings can be done. And from the solar we can collect the heat and that heat can drive the heat pumps from the wind we can generate the electricity and that electricity can drive the heat pump and from the combined heating and power uh, combined heating and power we can generate the heat and that can heat the hot water and that hot water can can generate the electricity so this is how that renewable energy can be used to uh, generate the uh, cooling but in all the case we need the heat so to conclude the whole presentation we should encourage the alternate cooling solution and the, and reduce the cooling loads for the buildings reduce the impact of the rising space cooling demand by supporting the building envelope technologies such as the low emissivity window roof insulation wall insulation so that the overall cooling load can be decreased building integrated solutions such as solar cooling systems to reduce the overall need for space cooling and to increase the share of renewable energy in space cooling production low energy cooling techniques should be deployed with like evaporative cooling in dry and hot climate in dry and hot climates we can easily use the evaporative cooling and they work very good increase the energy performance
performance of this, including those that use the refrigerants with low global warming potential, especially in the south countries, we use the refrigerants that has a that still deplete zone and their global and the warming potential is very high. Incentives and support for market-based measures can also create economic of scale benefit to reduce the upfront cost of the energy efficient because they are very expensive. So uh, if they are benefits subsidies by the government, we can uh, and the air conditioning units uh, price can be reduced. It, it will directly affect the overall energy consumption. Alternate cooling solutions. Solar cooling can be could be instrumental to meet the growing cooling demand as integrated renewable energy and, and energy storage solutions. Storage solutions could be used to meet the cooling needs and be paired with the demand side management tool to reduce the impact of the peak demand on electric solution, particularly to reduce the installed cost of this. Thank you very much. This was my presentation. If you have any question, you can directly ask or you can write. I will answer. These are the references that I have used for this presentation. Thank you very much. Very much, Doctor. Uh, Doctor Adil Vakas. It was uh, indeed a very informative and detailed discussion on not only on present air conditioning but the future air conditioning system as well uh, yes certainly we have questions for you though we have uh, we are short of time and uh, i believe that some of the questions have been uh, addressed but still we would like to have a detailed uh, overview from your site so i'll take few quick questions uh, with the, uh, uh, regret to if i miss anyone so we have the first question from uh, Dr. Yusuf Jamal. He's an environmentalist and professor at local university. Uh, he, from his own uh, interest, he wanted to know that what sort of refrigerants are used uh, in uh, India and Pakistan, or you can generically say in South Asian context, uh, that what selection criteria is adopted by environmentalist, environmental agencies uh, as from uh, one AC, man it, it's his view that from one AC manufacturer to other, the type and quality of refrigerant is different. Yes, I uh, I have explained here the time. I will go to that slide. That most of the that in the current air conditioning systems, which are uh, very efficient, and I say that the inverter based air conditioners, they are using the refrigerants, which is the hydrofluorocarbons. But still, I can see that hydrochlorofluorocarbons are being used in, 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 the, in the third world countries also. But the most efficient systems that are coming, like in my own room, but I see that they are using the R1, R410A, which is the hydrofluorocarbon. It does not contain the chlorine. Uh, with, uh, another point that, uh, what, what are the selection criteria that I'm not sure that I will be able to answer that question. Uh, because I'm not sure that which are the policies which are the environmentalists are are following. But but in, in, right. in developing uh, uh, R410A is mostly used in most new air conditioners which are coming from the developed countries. Yes, I, I agree with you. Uh, sir, another question is uh, a scholar uh, in HVAC systems, uh, Mr. Imran Ali Shah. Uh, uh, he mentioned one missing area, which was that uh, in our uh, refrigerants, we missed ammonia. That's what he's highlighted. And at the same time, he raised a question that is there any difference of compressor types bet uh, between inverter and non-inverter ACs? I mean, whether we are using different uh, uh, these uh, compressors for both type of air conditioners. Uh, their compressors, the main operation, uh, I can tell him the, the main operation of there is the motor that drives the compressor. That the motor that is driving the compressor is frequency changes, which is the major difference. And I'm not sure that their compressor is different or not different, but the major difference that it takes the AC voltage, it converts into the DC, changes its frequency, and again converts into the AC and drives the motor of the compressor. About the type of the compressor, I'm not sure. 
but the main uh, main thing that it moves that it moves the motor of the inverter air conditioners right so thank you very much and there was uh, there is another question uh, from our colleague from nepal mr tularam he wants to know that uh, can uh, this existing uh, air conditioner can be uh, retrofitted or converted into inverter air conditioners uh, inverter i see in the local market that they can do it but uh, i'm not sure that it can be done or not but in the local markets i see that they put some uh, external something but it is difficult because the, the inverter ac is it it contains very sophisticated machines and it is difficult that it can be converted into the inverter ACs, non-inverter. It can create a lot of problems. Either to increase the energy efficiency, maybe it can consume more energy if we do it, if we retrofit it again. Okay. Sense. It, it makes local sense and it I, seems I, logical. I, yeah, but in local market, I have seen that they put uh they they take some box senses that uh, and if you get it to the ac and you would uh, like to work but i'm not sure that it will work right sir there is one another question that most of the discussion we uh i mean our presentation was around the environmental aspects of these refrigerants and the future air conditioning is re evolving regarding these greenhouse gas reduction but obviously, as you mentioned at several places in your presentation, that people are uh, still not, uh, I mean, the, whether it's the buying capacity or the culture that people in South Asia, in particularly, and maybe in general, in uh, all over the world, are not using to buy these efficient air conditioners. So what do you think that in terms of uh, capital cost as well as running cost, where you see the future air conditioning? future air conditioning i see that it is like in, in in pakistan or in the south countries we prefer the split type air conditioning units and for split type air conditioners the non-inverter air conditionings they are going to phase out in coming years and there will be the inverter based air conditioning units and it will its demand will increase in the coming days and this is how i see and uh, because in in most of the sark season we have the i'm not wrong that we have the dry season and we have the monsoon season in every sark country in most of the sark country in in the dry season yes i i myself use the evaporative cooler uh, and it gives very good cooling and it just consumes 100 watts 200 watts something like this compared to the air conditioning systems energy consumption is very less but in the humid conditions we must remove the humidity and with the evaporative cooler cannot reduce the humidity so we must use the air conditioners so we put, we should put some uh, research areas we should together in the SAR countries that evaporative coolers can be coupled with the uh, humidity remover something like desiccants but of course if you ask me we will uh, the things are moving even in india i have seen that most of the market share is being captured by the inverter based air conditioners actually this my next, next question was, in, was interestingly uh, relevant to this uh, evaporative cooling which we typically called uh, air coolers or room coolers in our local language uh, yes, you are right that the only problem that uh, we face is in the humid months, uh, humid months like the July and August, particularly in this uh, South Asian region. So as you already explained in your presentation and yet and again in previous question, but yet my question is that uh, do you see any futuristic economical solution to address this uh, humidity problem? Because if we remove, we, we control this problem, Yes, you are right that ideally this is the cheapest solution for our uh, air conditioning in our region. Okay. Yes, its cheapest solution is because all the South Asian or the SAR countries, they have they are very good in the solar energy. 
and the solar energy we can get a very good heat and the heat can can be used to remove the humidity during the humid season and we can use some some type of desiccants but the issue is that these desiccants they are not available commercially this system is not like air conditioners like air conditioners i just press a button from my remote and it start working but the alternate solution for this is not like this like 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 uh, this is not commercially available but and not also when the commercially is not available it it is the, it, it is not economically viable so rather than when there is no ease of usage people will go towards the readily available solution so it is under I should not say a research phase but their models are not available for the public i think that we should work on the well, because in south asian countries especially in the sark region this is our need and if it is our need we should put efforts together the sark countries should put efforts together to make it viable solution and economical solution for the people thank you very much dr saab there are so many questions in queue and i will say sorry to them because of the time limitations but as i mentioned in my introduction and i will again request them that they can share their questions via uh, uh, our email address is given and the, the details of the presenters you can share your questions we will definitely answer your each and every query uh, at the same time let me clarify one thing to our uh, one participant who is asking for uh, uh, information about heat pump but obviously if we start explaining that it will take us to another direction and for that uh, i will uh, i assure you that i will share you some information regarding that heat pumps and if i could find because you asked for a book regarding that so i will try myself in my capacity to give you uh, such stuff at my end so once again uh, dr sap thank you very much now for your time and your presentation and your information uh, we are really grateful to you sir thank you very much so thank you with this we move thank you sir so with this we move to uh, our next uh, presenter who is uh, basically hvac expert uh, he, uh, his name is uh, mohammed wakas leri he is a facilities specialist at one of tower's leading hospital uh, and uh, in queensway carlton hospital he is responsible for the safe and efficient operation of the air conditioning and heating plants so to to get a benefit of his practical experience uh, along with that his master degree in engineering uh, is a master in engineering and certified associate in project management uh, capm uh, mohammed has his uh, stationary engineering license and recently he completed ashre hvac design and operating operations training training uh, he is working to become an awe certified energy manager cm i may request mohammed ukas to apprise us as uh, on advance air conditioning system efficiency over to you ukas hello uh, just want to confirm uh, that uh, you guys are hearing my voice can you please confirm Yes, Vakas, we can hear you, but uh, yet your screen is not shared with us. Uh, you, you just tried. We can, we can start their screen first, uh, yeah. but it's uh, again difficult. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's working now. So over to you, Vakas. Good evening, everybody in uh, South Asian region, and uh, if anybody is listening in uh, North America, good morning to them. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hassan, for giving me the opportunity to talk about the uh, future of air conditioning in buildings. And uh, I will talk about uh, advances that have been made in AC systems efficiency. My name is Mohammed Vakas, and uh, I'm facility specialist at Queen's Colton Hospital in Ottawa, Canada, and I take care of uh, a big heating plant, uh, about 4,800 units, uh, centralized uh, heating plant, and which have about uh, 10 to 12 uh, uh, air conditioners uh, and about 12 boilers. And altogether, it 
uh, that system uh, provides uh, heat to about uh, 1,200 uh, uh, individual spaces, as well as uh, 8,000 uh, square foot building. So I will talk about uh, uh, four um, major topics today, uh, which include uh, air conditioning equipment efficiency ratings, uh, need of high efficiency air conditioning systems, uh, ways to improve air conditioning systems efficiency, and government regulations and incentive programs which can help to buy uh, efficient, air, efficient air conditioning uh, units. And in the end, uh, I'll conclude my discussions. And uh, the last slide would be uh, the references. Air conditioning efficiency uh, can be uh, described uh, and uh, explained in a number of different ways. Um, here is a list of a couple of uh, uh, systems and units that uh, we can uh, explain our uh, air conditioning efficiency. Uh, which is the SEER, which is Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratios, uh, EER, Energy Efficiency Ratios, Energy Star uh, Certification uh, Process, uh, COP, which is Coefficient of Performance, APF, Annual Performance Factor, IPLV, which is Integrated Power Value. All those systems uh, basically uh, tells us about the efficiency, and uh, efficiency is... Uh, basically the ratio between the output uh, energy or work done uh, by the input uh, power or uh, the energy. In North America, uh, SEER and EAR are the most uh, used uh, efficiency units that uh, uh, that's available in the uh, all the units uh, in um, North American uh, industry. All air conditioning units uh, have the SEER or the ear ratings on them. So SEER and ear is uh, is is uh, quite the same in a way that uh, the formula uh, to uh, to drive uh, the efficiency is same, which is a cooling output in BTU and uh, divided by electricity usage in kilowatt hour. The basic unit between SEER and EAR is uh, based on how we uh, get the average. Uh, so for SEER, it is actually a season-based average. And uh, EAR is actually uh, like uh, at the spot average. And it's uh, mostly calculated on uh, very specific conditions, usually in, uh, in test labs. Higher SEER in year means like your unit is more efficient. And uh, in US, you can uh, find uh, units which are uh, uh, which have SEER ratings between 20 to 28. To make it uh, simple of uh, understanding between SEER and year, I will uh, give you an, an analogy of a car uh, efficiency. So kind of car efficiency, you can... Uh, get the uh, efficiency while driving a car within a city and you can get the efficiency while driving a car on a highway. Definitely the uh, seed efficiency uh, in a city, uh, uh, the car efficiency in a city is lower than the uh, highway. And uh, that's, a, that's a kind of analogy you can use to uh, describe between seed and year. So seed is like a seasonal average uh, and it's a kind of a, uh, city driving, which gives us more accurate reading uh, throughout uh, the year, and we can rely on that SEER readings. That's why if you are trying to find uh, air conditioner uh, for your home or uh, like industrial industrial use or commercial use, uh, people mostly rely on SEER readings. My second uh, discussion topic is uh, uh, need of high efficiency AC systems. Uh, we need uh, high efficiency AC systems uh, because of two uh, big reasons. One is uh, environmental uh, benefits, which is the low GHG emissions. And second is because of the uh, cost. Uh, most of the air, air conditioning units uh, are available in the market for whatever the building needs are, uh, either like a household, commercial, or industrial, 
they all mostly run on electricity. And the electricity cost is getting high on daily, not daily, but uh, is getting high on day-to-day uh, uh, -day basis, or, and uh, in future, the cost of the electricity gonna high. So uh, these two big reasons that uh, we have to make sure that our uh, AC systems is efficient. So we can bring our cost down and we can bring our uh, GHG emissions, indirect GHG emissions uh, down. So here's a, a, a graph uh, which tells about the consumption of uh, energy by buildings. So in US, buildings are uh, use uh, most uh, amount of energy uh, compared to industry and transportation. And even in the buildings, the HVAC uh, use uh, the highest share of energy, which is 17%. And uh, this graph is uh, actually like uh, kind of outdated. It's 2010, but uh, uh, but now now the energy is uh, for the buildings is even higher than the numbers uh, on the graph right now. The next slide will explain in detail about uh, the uh, energy use um, by residential buildings and commercial buildings. And uh, I want to uh, put uh, emphasize on uh, cooling. So if you see on the res residential sites, the cooling is about 12% of the overall energy used by the buildings. And on the industrial side or commercial side, the cooling take a share of about 13%. Uh, here I want to um, describe uh, that uh, American, it's, it's, an, it's an average American uh, uh, energy use. Uh, in, a, uh, in America, there are regions which are really cold, uh, like North Dakota, and uh, there are regions which are really high on the south side uh, of the America. And this is uh, not, uh, uh, these numbers are the average numbers. Definitely, uh, if I talk about uh, SARC regions, uh, which is uh, India, Pakistan, and uh, Bangladesh, and all the uh, surrounding countries, the temperature in summertime uh, gets really high. And uh, not only the temperature, but the humidity values goes high as well, which uh, increase uh, the demand of cooling and uh, air conditioning. As uh, uh, one of like our previous uh, presenter was uh, explaining that uh, the Saudi Arabia, they use uh, the maximum energy to, uh, to generate cooling. And uh, that's uh, the uh, growing trend gonna be in next uh, future for the SARC nations. And that's the reason that uh, we have to work on our uh, air conditioning efficiency. And, uh, and uh, if if we if we want to uh, keep our uh, GHG emissions down, and if we want to to uh, make sure that uh, in uh, in future uh, years when the temperature will rise and people live a healthy life and in a comfortable environment, we have to make sure. So we we have to make sure that we provide them efficient air conditioning systems so they can uh, use them cheaply and they can uh, make their uh, life better. Here's uh, another slide, and uh, it will tell us about the overall uh, cost uh, of the air conditioning systems. So life cycle cost of the air condition, uh, uh, of, of an air conditioning uh, system, you can divide it into like a four uh, major components, which are uh, like uh, the equipment cost, which is non-refrigerant equipment cost. And then you can uh, add on uh, refrigerant cost and uh, then the installation cost and the, finally the operating cost. So if you see, uh, the units, uh, two different units, one is uh, in uh, India and uh, the other is in, in uh, US. You can clearly see that in India, the uh, operating cost is 83%, which means uh, the units are not efficient and uh, they, they, they are wasting a lot of energy. And uh, in comparison to US, you can see the equipment cost, which is highly efficient, uh, costs you more 
but uh, over the years as an operating cost it uh, uh, the cost of the uh, the cost of the system goes down because uh, the unit is efficient and its operating cost is low and uh, here i want to make uh, to uh, make another comment that this is uh, uh, a seven year uh, life cycle cost like considering that both units will live or will uh, provide cooling up to seven years. And if uh, the, the, uh, the unit keep uh, cooling and maintain uh, its efficiency, the operating cost will even go higher than uh, the current numbers. Now I'll jump on to my main topic, uh, which is uh, ways to improve uh, air conditioning system efficiency. To improve air conditioning system efficiency, you cannot just rely on one thing, and uh, which is uh, the air conditioning equipment itself. Uh, you cannot just uh, make your air conditioning equipment, uh, you know, top of the notch uh, uh, system or equipment, and then you put it on uh, on on uh, on a building which is badly designed, which is not very well insulated, and uh, which uh, do not have very well envelope. So air conditioning uh, efficiency, to improve your air, air conditioning efficiency, you have to work on uh, multiple, uh, multiple directions at the same time. Uh, in this topic, uh, I will talk about uh, how we improve our efficiency. And uh, uh, there are six uh, important uh, ways that we have to uh, uh, work on and we have to do our brainstorming and we have to uh, dig uh, before we uh, install uh, our air conditioning systems to any new building or any existing building. So those uh, topics include uh, improvement in AC equipment designs. Uh, second topic would be improvement in building designs. Third would be proper selection of HVAC system. And uh, fourth would be adoption of building automation control. And third, uh, uh, fifth will be proper training and operation of HVAC system. And the last would be preventive maintenance of HVAC systems. I will talk uh, in detail about uh, the first two uh, uh, topics, which is uh, equipment designs and uh, uh, building designs, because uh, both topics uh, um, um, are really important to get maximum efficiency out of your uh, air conditioning systems. <clears throat> Here is a centralized ducted uh, air conditioning system, which is uh, mostly used uh, in commercial uh, buildings all over uh, North America. Uh, I know in uh, um, in Asian countries, uh, the centralized air conditioning system is not uh, uh, common uh, yet. But uh, here in North America, every commercial building, uh, I believe 99% of the commercial building, uh, go with the uh, centralized uh, heating and cooling systems. Here is a schematic diagram of uh, the system here, and uh, here I uh, will. Uh, try to explain uh, all the important components of the systems. Considering the air handling units, we start with the return ducts, uh, which is uh, on the left side, and then the return air fan, and then we have dampers, uh, we have uh, outside air, uh, which mix with the return air, uh, we have cooling coils, uh, we have heating coils, and then we have a supply fan. And the cooling coils get their uh, chilled water from a chiller, uh, which in this case is uh, is uh, uh, evaporative, which uh, is, is evaporative uh, chiller. Uh, it's used a cooling tower, and uh, it's it's use uh, it uses a uh, refrigerant, uh, which is the medium uh, to to which is a medium to uh, cool uh, the to cool the water and it have two heat exchangers, uh, condensers and evaporator, uh, which use as a heat exchanger uh, to, 
to to make our water chilled uh, that we'll eventually use to make our space uh, cool. And uh, for heating system, we have a boiler. I do the same thing, but for heating system, it's not uh, a part of our discussion here. And on the right side uh, here, it's uh, like a distribution system. So here in this diagram, uh, it's a, a three-story building, uh, which uh, every uh, 800 unit is, uh, we have divided the three-story building into three zones. And every zone have its own 800 units. You can see that there are three 800 units. And if it is like uh, a 10 or 20 multi-story buildings, that same trend could go uh, higher as well. I believe I have uh, explained all the components. And on the distribution size, you can uh, see that the, we use 800 units, ducts, diffusers, uh, piping, and the duct work. Those are all the components uh, of the air handling uh, and uh, air conditioning uh, system that uh, I'm going to talk about uh, in terms of efficiency. Just like uh, uh, I talked about that uh, we have to work on uh, multiple directions to get our equipment uh, you know, uh, efficient, uh, to make our equipment efficient. In the same way, uh, just uh, considering the uh, air conditioning systems, they are, it, it, it's made of many components and uh, not only one component uh, uh, will drive the efficiency of the system. Every single component is important. And uh, from last 25 years, um, uh, the research and development have uh, um, made possible uh, to give us uh, the best uh, components uh, that we can use in our air conditioning systems to increase our efficiency. So the components I'm going to talk about are uh, variable speed drive, uh, advanced uh, compressors, improved heat exchangers, uh, electronic expansion valves, uh, high efficiency fans, high efficiency motors, advanced controls, electronic actuators, high efficiency filters, uh, low resistant ducts, uh, pipes and their fittings, and well-designed uh, diffusers and grills. Variable speed drives. Variable speed drives uh, improve uh, uh, our compressors and fan motors efficiency big time. It, uh, uh, it works in a way that if uh, we have a high load, the fan speed will go high. And if we have a moderate load, uh, the fan speed will uh, go down. And if you have very minimum load, the fan speed will go low. And as the fan speed go low, we will save our uh, uh, electricity. It's not uh, like uh, one speed motor which is either go on or off, and uh, uh, it, it is a variable uh, speed uh, which, uh, which we can adjust and uh, which can be controlled automatically as per our load requirement. So it uh, improves our efficiency big time in uh, centralized uh, air conditioning systems. It also uh, match uh, part load cooling demands. It's improved seasonal efficiency, uh, and it also reduced cycling losses. So just in case if we don't have uh, a variable speed drive, and if you are going with the uh, one speed compressor or fan, what's going to happen uh, at uh, at whatever the load is, the fan will go full blast and supply the air and the cooling. And uh, when it doesn't require, the fan will shut down and it's, 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 uh, it's cycling uh, between on and off. So which uh, uh, creates a lot of uh, losses in terms of uh, electricity. And uh, to avoid those losses, uh, we use uh, variable speed drives, which reduce the cycling losses. It also help uh, meet the airflow requirements. So, uh, Sometimes the, uh, the airflow requirements uh, we need is higher than, uh, it's, it's higher. And the airflow requirements uh, uh, fluctuates and uh, uh, it, it vary on day-to-day -day basis and, on, uh, on, uh, and, and, and within 24 hours a day. 
uh, buildings uh, um, are occupied during the daytime and uh, they're unoccupied during the nighttime or maybe less occupied during the nighttime. So variable speed drives help us to control the airflow uh, and eventually it helps us to make our uh, air conditioning systems efficient. Then I'll talk about uh, advanced compressors. Uh, there are variant, uh, varied, various type of compressors uh, available in the market. Uh, five major types of uh, uh, compressors are rotary, reciprocating, scroll, centrifugal, screw. They are doing the same thing. Uh, they are uh, compressing our refrigerant uh, after uh, evaporation. Uh, and uh, the they, uh, compressor refrigerant that we can uh, again use uh, in our uh, evaporation coils and that cycle goes, the uh, vapor um, evaporation cooling. And uh, there are now uh, there are high um, high quality and uh, efficient compressors uh, available in the market, which are uh, scroll compressors and uh, rotary compressors. There's one more thing I want to talk about is uh, uh, series stage uh, compressors. So uh, as we have the variable drives uh, available uh, to us to uh, modulate the uh, air demand and the cooling demand, in, instead of buying one big chiller or instead of buying one big compressors, uh, we can stage our compressors. We can buy different um, uh, capacity com compressors and different capacity chillers so we can run our chillers as the load required. So if it's uh, a March season when the heating isn't, uh, uh, the weather is not that hot, we can just rely on one, comp one uh, chiller or one compressor. And as the weather, you know, uh, uh, rise as the temperature rise uh, we can use our uh, our chillers uh, in series as the load rise we can start second uh, chiller and uh, so on so it help uh, the stage uh, uh, series stage chiller system helps uh, to improve the efficiency of the system of the overall system <clears throat> Improved heat exchangers. Uh, over the time, we have uh, improved our heat exchangers. Heat exchangers are uh, one of the integral part of the AC systems. Uh, we use evaporative coils, we use uh, condensing coils in terms of uh, uh, centralized ducted uh, air system. Uh, we use uh, hot water and uh, that flows through the coils. And um, same thing with the chiller, uh, we use cold water that flows through the coils. And uh, uh, over the time, we have uh, improved our uh, chillers. Uh, uh, we have improved our heat exchangers. Uh, they they got uh, uh, they got their efficiency, and they now the chillers have uh, reduced uh, fan energy consumptions. Uh, they are smaller in size uh, by being smaller in size. They use less refrigerant, which means uh, low uh, direct GHG emissions. So all those uh, uh, research have uh, made those chiller, uh, made those heat exchangers are uh, really uh, energy efficient. The next thing is electronic expansion valve. Uh, in uh, in a vapor uh, compression uh, air conditioner uh, expansion valve. Uh, uh, is the, is the main component to control the uh, cooling. And uh, uh, there are two main uh, uh, expansion valves that you use uh, to control the cooling um, and control the flow of uh, uh, refrigerant in the evaporation coils. One is the thermal expansion valve and the other is electronic expansion valve. Thermal expansion valve uh, is uh, the old technology and uh, it's uh, it has been replaced uh, with the electronic expansion valves. And uh, electronic expansion valves uh, can give you uh, a good control on the flow of uh, uh, refrigerant and uh, it provides uh, increased modulation and uh, it also match uh, very quickly with the with their capacity and with their needs and uh, with the load demands. 
So electronic expansion valves is uh, a great uh, component uh, in component which uh, give us a high, uh, which gives us uh, uh, which is which gives us uh, high uh, high control and uh, bring our energy cost down. By the research and development, we are able to uh, create our fans and made our fans uh, more aerodynamics. Uh, more aerodynamics means that uh, they can push more air uh, with the least resistance. And uh, we have our uh, aerodynamic axial and centrifugal fans, which are mostly used fans in uh, AC systems. And uh, those fans use uh, high efficiency motors, which further uh, decrease uh, their energy use. And they are all uh, uh, controlled uh, by variable speed drives. So that's, uh, uh, you can time it three uh, in terms of uh, energy consum consumption by, uh, by our old uh, kind of fan. High efficiency motors. Motors are the main component of uh, any air conditioning uh, system. Um, in a centralized uh, heating plant, uh, we have about uh, more than 500 motors in our plant, and uh, um, it's the motor efficiency is is the most. Those motors in uh, in that plant they run uh, continuously, 24/7, all the time, and uh, uh, even a one-digit uh, efficiency increase uh, sum up with the with the huge uh, benefits uh, in the end of the year. And uh, motor technology has gone uh, better and better uh, over the over the time, and uh, we we got now electrically commuted motors, uh, which are uh, uh, which can be controlled by uh, our variable speed drives, and uh, they can run on a wide range of conditions uh, on a low load and uh, on a high load, and uh, uh, with, uh, with with a minimum or um, with a minimum amount of uh, energy. The next uh, component I'll talk about are the uh, sensors. Um, sensors are, uh, are really important uh, to keep uh, our uh, AC system efficient. Uh, there are numerous type of sensors uh, which we uh, air conditioner system use, which uh, include occupancy sensor, Temperature sensor, uh, humidity sensor, and uh, pressure sensors. Uh, uh, for, uh, from safety prospect, uh, from safety prospect, uh, there are uh, CO2 sensors and uh, smoke sensors as well. So just in case, uh, in a multi-residential building, if uh, there is a smoke in one building, and uh, we can detect it uh, through the return air, and uh, we can shut down our AC system and uh, the fire alarm goes off and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a safety device and it's uh, most in uh, multi-residential buildings as well as uh, uh, commercial buildings. These sensors uh, um, increase our uh, efficiency in a way that, uh, that uh, uh, the spaces uh, where, uh, where we need uh, a schedule or uh, a schedule heating or uh, the spaces where uh, in, in every single space there are thermostat uh, which sends the temperature, send it back to the control room and uh, that's how the temperature of the space we control. And uh, in the main air hauling units, uh, the sensors use uh, to um, check humidity, check uh, air temperature if we are sending uh, really cold air which is not uh, efficient because we are reheating uh, our uh, supply air close to the uh, close to the space as in, in a reheat system. So those sensors help uh, to uh, to run our systems efficiently. And in the end, uh, I will talk about uh, actuators, filters, uh, ducts, and diffusers. In a central uh, air conditioning systems, actuators uh, play uh, a central role. 
all the control valves which are on heating coils and cooling coils are controlled uh, by actuators, uh, digital control actuators. We have uh, high efficiency filters uh, now available in the market, uh, which give us uh, uh, a minimum uh, pressure drop across the filter. Uh, the ducts designs have been uh, gone better. Uh, the ducts uh, give uh, us minimum friction losses uh, throughout the system. And uh, we have very well diffusers. Uh, diffusers are the end uh, uh, component of the uh, air conditioning systems, diffusers and grills. And uh, diffusers uh, designs got better over the years, which can spread the air over a large uh, area and uh, which are acoustic as well. Uh, they, they can uh, uh, dampen uh, the noise of uh, air in the ductwork. And all those, uh, um, all those components, they have a part uh, in making our air conditioning systems uh, efficient, one way or the other. Now I will talk about um, a second uh, main uh, topic, which is the uh, uh, high-performance building design, uh, that uh, how we can make our buildings that I uh, explained first, and uh, in which the equipment design is the number one thing. and. Uh, the second number, uh, the second thing, is, second most important thing is the high performance building design. I want to give you an, 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 an analogy here about a car. So you can design the best car, but uh, uh, a best sport car, but you cannot run that sport car in the desert. Uh, you need a very well maintained highway where you can run that sport car, sport car to get the maximum benefit out of it. So similar thing with the uh, air conditioning system as well. You can build uh, the world uh, top class, uh, high efficient uh, air conditioner, but uh, if you put that air conditioner in a poorly designed building, that system uh, will fail or, or uh, it will not uh, be as efficient as uh, you thought it, it would be. So the second main component of uh, any uh, as, as air conditioning system as a whole is the high performance building. And uh, high performance building uh, are, are the one which uh, have a great envelope and uh, which uh, reduce minimum uh, uh, heat. And uh, our air, air conditioners, uh, uh, cover the cooling load and uh, high performance building are the one which uh, have or give the minimum cooling load. Uh, so we need a small air conditioner uh, that can fulfill the needs of the occupants. Here in North America, there are building codes, uh, energy codes in place, uh, which uh, uh, takes uh, the uh, directions to SHA performance uh, standard and uh, International Energy Conservation Code as well. And uh, they design buildings very well, uh, very well insulated buildings, very uh, uh, well sited buildings, and uh, which eventually helps our air conditioning systems, uh, uh, which eventually help our air conditioning systems and uh, keep our air, air conditioning systems efficient. I will talk about all the major component in a building. Uh, Mr. Okas, are you with, please, with us? Please. Hello? You are not audible. Okay, so can you hear me now? Hello? Yes, sir, we can hear you. You can continue. Thanks, sir. Okay. So can you please tell me like which slide uh, you guys didn't hear me? Uh, so uh, just repeat the uh, one or two sentences. Uh, otherwise you are audio but yeah. Okay, perfect. So I'll keep continuing with the high performance building then. Okay, thank you. No problem. So I will talk uh, in detail about all the components of the building, which can uh, uh, help us to uh, keep our air conditioner uh, efficient. 
in in next following slides. Uh, next following slides. To keep our buildings uh, uh, well insulated, so we work on our building envelope. So building envelope include uh, building insulation, windows, doors, thermal bridges, roofing, surface uh, orientation, infiltration and exfiltration, and uh, lightning. And, uh, and on the internal side, it's uh, include lightning and appliances. Insulation. Uh, we can increase our uh, home or building insulation through increasing the wall thickness. And uh, if we cannot increase our wall thickness, we have to use uh, insulating materials. The insulating materials which have a higher R value is uh, better as compared to which have lower R value. And uh, the most uh, the R value of the insulation, the better insulated our house is, which means uh, it requires low uh, cooling or heating load as uh, required for the season, and uh, it will eventually increase our uh, air conditioning system efficiency. So when we are insulating our buildings, we have to make sure that we insulate our attics, uh, uh, our walls, our floors. Uh, if we are on a second floor, is uh, we have to uh, we have to insulate our floors as well. And uh, we have to reduce conduction heat gains. Uh, and uh, just only uh, the insulation, insulation, if we have a very well insulated home, it can save uh, or increase our efficiency by 38%, up to 38%. The second main component of uh, a building is the windows. And uh, uh, we have uh, technology available uh, that we can, uh, uh, get uh, multi-pane glass windows with uh, inner glass built, which uh, increase uh, as uh, uh, which the inner glass give us the insulation and uh, which uh, reduce the uh, U factor of the window. Uh, the technology we have right now, it's also a dynamic glazing technology, uh, which uh, reduce solar heat gains uh, by filtering out uh, infrared radi radiations and uh, uh, let uh, the natural light pass uh, through the window. It's, uh, it's really helpful. And uh, just using those windows, we can increase our uh, uh, air conditioning efficiency by 20% or we, can, or we can decrease our cooling loads by 20%, vice versa. The next component uh, uh, in a building is the doors. Uh, here in North America, uh, the concept of vestibule, uh, and here that's a vestibule, it's a kind of entrance before an entrance. It helps us uh, to, to keep uh, the inside air in and the outside air in. It's kind of like a, a transition between, uh, between, uh, between outside and inside. So these are very helpful in uh, in, in uh, keeping our air conditioner or uh, the uh, in, in, in case of heating seasons, uh, we, we save our lot of energy through the vestibules. The second concept is uh, the, the, the solution is a revolving door. If you go into a mall, uh, those doors are pretty common and uh, those revolving door, doors are sealed and people can go in and out uh, effectively and uh, with the with the energy um, you know with the energy efficient way. Uh, at homes, we use uh, door stoppers, uh, which are like uh, control the air uh, to you know to to infiltrate or exfiltrate under the doors or side of the doors. We use uh, door ceilings, uh, which keep the doors uh, tightly closed. We also use door closes. Uh, those door closes automatically close the doors so when uh, you open the door and uh, those door closes will close the doors automatically. Those all uh, components and uh, a little um, extra effort uh, help us to increase the uh, air conditioning efficiency. 
Uh, thermal bridges. Uh, we have to avoid uh, thermal bridges in our uh, homes and uh, in our buildings. Uh, thermal bridges uh, eliminate gaps in building insulations and uh, they allow uh, uh, and increase our conduction heat. Uh, and uh, they, they decrease our uh, overall uh, uh, efficiency of the system as uh, um, by by letting the heat uh, go either in or out as uh, as per the requirement as 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 uh, the need so here you can see that the concrete slab is uh, pass is, is is the balcony concrete slab and it's the same concrete slab which is uh, uh, on the inside of the floor and uh, the heat flows through the concrete slab even though we have uh, uh, our wall very well insulated but we are losing our heat or in in in, uh, in case of uh, cooling we are losing our cooling through the concrete slab so we have to avoid those thermal bridges those are uh, they they decrease our uh, system efficiency another component uh, in uh, uh, to to keep our buildings uh, more efficient is the roof uh, there's uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, heat gain uh, can can happen through the roof and uh, we have to stop it so uh, there are two different options either we can use uh, a bright color uh, paint uh, to use on the roof or we can make uh, our roof uh, greens uh, so vegetative roofs uh, they are uh, getting uh, uh, yeah, they are getting famous uh, in uh, in green buildings and uh, and in terms of uh, uh, houses, they use uh, they use uh, reflective or um, bright colors uh, to use on their roofs. And uh, here's a comparison that if you use like a, a black colored uh, paint on your roof, the average roof surface temperature would be like 180 degree Fahrenheit. In case of a bright roof, it is 100. Average indoor temperature, it will keep about 115. It will keep the indoor temperature, which is 80 degree Fahrenheit. And uh, sunlight reflections on a bright roof is 85%. And uh, on a black roof, it is 20%. So uh, we have to uh, make sure that our roofs are energy efficient and uh, uh, they, they, they are part of the overall building design, uh, which, which, which help us uh, to make our air, air conditioning systems efficient. Then I talk about surface uh, orientation. The architecture must uh, consider where they want to build uh, a new home. And uh, if it is uh, uh, in, in, a, in a busy street, in a, in a city center or a main downtown, how can they use other buildings uh, uh, shade uh, to, to bring down their heating needs? And uh, the surface orientation is very important. Uh, if, if, uh, uh, if it is a really hot uh, environment, you can uh, increase your uh, uh, air conditioning system efficiency by putting the window on north and south sides. So you get the minimum sun uh, through your windows. And uh, and if uh, if the building is in main downtown or uh, at city center, you can use the shade of other buildings uh, and make our make your building uh, you know uh, economical and uh, efficient. Infiltration and exfiltration. Uh, we must have to stop uh, infiltration and exfiltration in our homes. Uh, infiltration is uh, uh, if any outside air get into our uh, uh, into our building or into our home. Uh, it uh, affects uh, the efficiency as well as uh, the indoor air quality. And in the meantime, we have to stop exfiltrations. Exfiltration is if a conditioned air go or leaves uh, your building and uh, or it leaves or go into a place which, uh, which is not occupied. So, there are various locations where we uh, look uh, in specifically for infiltration and exfiltration, and those are like windows, uh, doors, um, uh, duct system, uh, 
make sure that our duct system is leak proof. There's no leaks on our duct system. Uh, if uh, in a laundry room, you have to make sure that uh, the dryer uh, exhaust is, is leak proof. It's not uh, uh, dumping heat into the, uh, into the home. And all the uh, corners, uh, everything in the building, uh, every corner in the building, if it's, there's a hole or if it is uh, not uh, well uh, enveloped, we have to make sure that uh, we cover that hole and we, we keep our envelope tight so we can stop infiltration and exfiltration uh, of the air. These uh, uh, um, factors will eventually help us to, uh, to make our air conditioning, uh, air conditioning system efficient. So far we talked about the uh, building envelope uh, and now we will talk about uh, the heat gains that we can have uh, within the home. And uh, uh, those heat gains could be uh, from the lightning systems and the appliances that we have uh, in our uh, homes. And here's a, a, a picture which can uh, differentiate between different kind of uh, light bulbs. They're, uh, heat loss and their, uh, uh, their lightning uh, uh, lumin luminosity. And if you see the LED, it is 75% uh, luminous. It creates more light and it is just generate like 15% uh, heat. But if you cons consider like the other uh, uh, lightning system, like bulbs, which is, uh, which get which release ninety percent of the um, of, of of the heat and just uh, uh, create uh, five percent of the uh, light. So we should use LED lights uh, more uh, in our buildings to to make sure that they emit low heat and uh, that emission of low heat will eventually. Uh, bring our cooling load down and uh, which help to make our air conditioning systems efficient. Those lights are even um, uh, contain occupancy sensors and uh, in the buildings. So if there's nobody in the, in the room or the building, the lights goes off, which uh, further enhance uh, our, uh, our, our, uh, 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 our air conditioning systems efficiency. Just like uh, light bulbs, appliances, they play an important role as well uh, in uh, increasing our heat load. Uh, so whenever we uh, get an appliance, we must look up uh, its energy guide, which will tell us that how much energy and how much heat it will uh, release during its operations. So we have to make sure that uh, we use uh, and keep our, uh, we use the best appliance uh, available in the market with the minimum uh, heat release uh, and uh, or the minimum uh, uh, dispel of heat. So on the third uh, uh, thing, uh, which is the HVAC uh, system selection. So after uh, buying uh, a best air conditioner, after having a best uh, building, a very well insulated building, now we have to select our uh, air conditioning systems. Air conditioning systems are various uh, types. There are various, there are so many principles which we can use to condition or cool the air. Uh, the, the distribution is, uh, uh, is how there's so many ways to distribute uh, the air, most commonly like centralized and decentralized systems. And even in the centralized systems, uh, there the distribution could be a single zone, variable volume, multi-zone, duct, uh, dual duct, de-heat, inductions, fan coils, uh, unit ventilators, individual units, heat pumps, and conductors. That's just a centralized uh, uh, heat systems uh, distribution. Uh, centralized heat system distribution is uh, can be performed by different uh, ways. And there, uh, in this diagram, they're, they're explained in terms of uh, the efficiency. Some are low efficient and some are high efficient uh, in terms of conductors and uh, uh, individual units. Uh, they are on the high efficiency end. 
So they are mostly used uh, in, 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 in the high efficient building. Uh, I wanna uh, emphasize on the point that uh, it is very important to, to select the right system for the right building. There are so many systems uh, available and every building is different than the other building. The location of the building is uh, different. Uh, the needs of the building is different. Uh, the occupancy of the building is different. And there's so many factors that we, we have to think about before we select our HVAC system. And uh, if unfortunately, or with the, with a bad uh, engineer or with a bad design, we, we, we got a system which is, not, uh, uh, which is not a good system for our building, now we had to, to stick with that because the centralized air conditioning system is uh, very expensive. And if you got a bad system, now you will not fulfill the needs. In the meantime, your uh, operating cost will go high. So the best uh, uh, HVAC system selection is, is very important in terms of overall life cycle cost and uh, in terms of uh, getting maximum out of your uh, air conditioning systems. So choose the best uh, um, HVAC, uh, HVAC system selection is, uh, is important and choose the best system which fulfills the building needs. Building automation controls. Now we have uh, uh, building automation uh, controls in place. Uh, some years ago, there were pneumatic controls. Uh, now we have uh, digital uh, controls, uh, which are uh, linked with every single room. And uh, they are further linked with the air handling units, uh, the, the main heating system, and uh, all those sensors are uh, interconnected. They are very well integrated to keep our systems uh, efficient. So here's a simple example of uh, a multi-story building. Uh, here you can see the air handling unit, uh, the distribution columns and uh, different zones, uh, the chiller plant. They're all controlled by the local access, which is uh, our control room. And being in the control room, uh, we can control the temperature of uh, any room in the building. Uh, we can control humidity uh, of any room in the building, as well as we can run our plant uh, efficiently being, uh, being in the building. Uh, we can see what, at what speed our fan is running, what is the condition of our uh, filters, how are our cooling coils and heating coils are performing, all those things can be monitored uh, in a central location and, uh, and uh, can be uh, operated through a central location. So overall, that, that's, that's, a, that's a, the building automation system is uh, about a multi-story residential and a commercial building. And, and in homes, there are uh, smart, uh, smart HVAC systems. You can control your home heating and uh, cooling through your cell phones, uh, which is uh, which is really cool, and uh, they help uh, those those control systems, uh, smart control systems, and building automation control systems. They have helped us to schedule our uh, heating and cooling needs. Uh, we can, if we are not at home, we can uh, remotely access the system. We can shut down our uh, chiller, and vice versa. If uh, it's really hot, we are outside the home, we want to come home and we can start our chiller before we enter uh, into a home. So those automation systems have increased uh, our uh, air conditioning efficiency dramatically. And uh, I, I will uh, just explain a couple of more, uh, more uh, good things about uh, uh, building controls. They they help us to remotely access to HVAC equipment. They help us to troubleshoot the uh, the equipment. Uh, the trend data is available. We can see at what speed the fan was running, the motor was running, the chiller was running, and uh, what caused the problem. We can review the trend data and we can make adjustment into our systems. And uh, lastly, it limits uh, the manpower uh, that requires to operate that uh, uh, big plant and uh, 
and uh, you can make our systems uh, efficient uh, by bringing the operating cost low with the minimum manpower. The next thing I want to talk about is proper training and operations of HVAC systems. HVAC systems is changing uh, is changing dramatically uh, in, in, in future. And over the years, it, it had changed. The technology is changing, the principles are changing, and the operation of the HVAC system is changing. So it is, uh, it is uh, highly uh, recommendable that you put your employees uh, on training. Uh, and you put your and you get yourself educated as well. If you have a air conditioning systems at home, get knowledge of the air conditioning systems, how it works, what needs to be work, uh, and what service and maintenance it needs. And uh, with the proper training and with the proper operations, you can get the maximum benefit out of your HVAC system. But if you are poorly trained or if you don't know how to operate the uh, HVAC system, you will end up running it badly, and uh, it could uh, you 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 would uh, uh, break down the system, or you will, or maybe you will use it uh, inefficiently. So proper training and operation of the HVAC system is really important uh, to uh, to get the maximum out of your HVAC systems and uh, keep your efficiency high. The last thing is uh, preventative maintenance of HVAC systems. HVAC systems is uh, made of many moving parts. Uh, many, many moving parts. Uh, it's a mechanical. Uh, mechanical systems fail over time, and uh, the 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 equipment wear and tear happens. So those uh, HVAC systems are uh, supposed to be maintained uh, uh, over over its life uh, cycle. And if the system is well maintained, it uh, it it will live longer. It will uh, be cost effective. But if it if the system is poorly maintained, it gonna it gonna cost you more uh, uh, in 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 its life cycle. So importance of HVAC preventive maintenance. Uh, it's save we we can save money. Uh, we can improve our efficiency. We can extend the life uh, of our uh, HVAC systems. Uh, we can spot problems before a shutdown happens. So uh, preventative maintenance is, uh, it's not like uh, after the breakdown, it is like a routine uh, stuff that uh, needs to be taken care of on routine routine basis. Uh, filters, they get clogged. Uh, they, they need to be replaced uh, after every six months or after a year, depend on the uh, requirements, uh, heat transfer coils, they need to be cleaned off uh, oftenly. Uh, ducts and pipes, they need to be checked uh, to make sure there's no leakage. Uh, we, we, we lubricate our uh, dampers, uh, we lubricate our motors, we lubricate our fans, uh, so, so we so that our, all those equipments, uh, motors, dampers, fans, they run on their uh, optimum uh, uh, efficiency and uh, that will increase our system's efficiency. There's so many others uh, um, preventive maintenance uh, measures we take, uh, but for the short of time, I will continue to my next slide. The last one, and uh, it's uh, one of the most uh, important uh, 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 impact that, uh, uh, that can change our uh, uh, air conditioning system's uh, efficiency which is uh, like the government efforts. The government should uh, put effort to uh, develop building codes and energy codes, uh, which uh, will uh, force the uh, uh, owners to build the buildings, which is uh, highly efficient. And uh, eventually it will help to reduce the energy consumptions. And uh, government also set the minimum efficiency standards. Uh, uh, in US, uh, at least the uh, the minimum uh, sear rating of a unit must be 13 uh, sear uh, to 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 be installed and to be sold in US. So that's uh, that's that's another uh, good step. The the the, the governments put uh, uh, put put uh, uh, a limit on what kind of systems can be used uh, and uh, sold in. Uh, 
uh, in, on, on their, on, in their countries. They also uh, uh, endorse uh, labels, which tells us about uh, the efficiency of the systems. If the systems are not very well maintained, uh, if the system is not uh, uh, efficient, the, the every, every household uh, uh, appliance and uh, air conditions, they are very well labeled and then they, they, they tell like what is the efficiency ratio of the, of the uh, equipment or the appliances. Uh, government also uh, put challenges and awards to to for the research and development uh, to bring our cost uh, down and uh, to make our systems efficient. So it's uh, uh, another effort that uh, governments uh, do to uh, to make uh, our air conditioning systems efficient. So they use less uh, energy, they use less electricity. So eventually, it helps to reduce the GHG emissions. In the end, uh, uh, they also offer incentive programs, uh, which uh, uh, which uh, are kind of uh, like if you buy a high efficient unit, so the government will give you some kind of tax rebates, so uh, uh, so you can the the so the 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 cost of the high efficient uh, unit, uh, you know, it it comes into the buyer reach, so he buys the high efficient unit. And uh, similar here, like uh, in Canada, uh, the government is uh, promoting to buy electrical cars and uh, they are actually giving $5,000 uh, to the owner if he buys an electrical car. Even though electrical cars are expensive, like uh, they are uh, $10,000 approximately are more expensive than the gas cars. But uh, with the government incentives, people uh, take that uh, step and they buy uh, efficient car, which they use uh, or release less, you know, CO2, and uh, which is good for the environment. And uh, I forgot to put another point, which is like the government also put uh, put taxes uh, here in Canada. There is a carbon tax, uh, if uh, which is like uh, four cents per liter of gas. Uh, that's a kind of a forcefully government uh, uh, pushing. Uh, the people to use the better options to use uh, the energy which uh, emit less amount of GHG gases. At this point, I will uh, uh, end my presentations. And uh, here's the conclusion. Uh, it's a, a kind of a brief summary of what I have explained. Uh, I've explained about uh, uh, air condition uh, efficiency ratio uh, systems. I talked about uh, GHG emissions uh, and uh, why we need uh, our uh, uh, highly efficient air conditions. There are two important needs to, to bring the uh, greenhouse gases emissions uh, down and uh, also to bring our air conditioning cost down because of our high electricity bill. And uh, I talked about in detail that how we can uh, improve our air conditioning uh, efficiency. And uh, I, I talked about almost all the steps that are, are, are important and uh, very well interconnected to each other. If you have a best system, but a bad building, if you have a best system, best building, but a bad selection of the HVAC system, if you have all of them, but uh, your staff is not very well trained, and uh, if uh, you do everything, but you do not do the preventative maintenance, you will eventually lose your uh, system uh, efficiency. So all those uh, 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 things are really important uh, to keep and to run your systems uh, efficiently. And in the end, the governments have to do their uh, share uh, to motivate people uh, and in some way to force people to use uh, uh, efficient uh, equipment. and. Uh, to, to, to minimize the GHG emissions uh, and uh, to minimize the energy use. And uh, these are my references. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Hassan, for giving me the opportunity. And uh, I'll end my presentation here.
Thank you very much, Mr. Vakas. It was indeed a very informative and detailed discussion. Uh, we are really grateful to you. You not only nicely this advanced air conditioning system efficiencies, but you guide us, guided us tips for our existing practices that are really very informative. Uh, well, obviously, I have so many questions, uh, and I don't know how I'll manage in, because we are already uh, out of our time. Uh, well, uh, first of all, let me uh, address one of the participants who asked for some repeated explanation of some technical uh, components of the conditioner to be uh, probably within a day we will be uploading these presentations uh, along with the um, link of this recording of this webinar so you can easily uh, review and repeat this telecast for your understanding and check each and everything in detail so in parallel to that uh, we have a question from how this it's basically from our um, from our participants from Bhutan, Mr. Nimal Pereira, who is interested to know that uh, in your opinion of uh, what about adopting district cooling systems in towns rather than having large number of individual air conditioning machines. I mean, how you look into it? <coughs> Uh, district heating and cooling uh, systems is uh, district heating and cooling systems is getting very common uh, nowadays. And uh, here in Orpa, they're going to build uh, one of the uh, biggest uh, district heating system uh, in Canada. And uh, the district heating system is instead of having individual uh, heating plant in uh, multi residential building or uh, in in the downtown main core the district heating system is is a one mega plant which will provide chilled water and which will provide hot water uh, to individual buildings and uh, that mega plant will charge those buildings afterwards and uh, that trend is uh, going uh, further uh, there is a project going on in Ottawa that uh, that plant going to be up and running in about 5 minutes so uh, there are about 70 government buildings that are uh, going to be uh, using these systems. And it's very uh, energy efficient. And, uh, and it it's, takes the minimum uh, cost in operations and maintenance. And uh, there's so many benefits in distributing systems. From Bhutan, he asked that do you see any trend in increasing uh, DC low voltage vapor compression air conditioning system around the world or in this particular region? Uh, vapor compression system is uh, still by far the most uh, commonly used uh, air conditioning systems around the world, and uh, even here, uh, there are so many technologies going on uh, to bring. Uh, uh, the uh, to to bring the GHG emissions down by improving the quality and uh, uh, the by by improving the quality of the refrigerant, but uh, by so far uh, vapor compression system is uh, is 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 uh, the mostly used system in the world, and we cannot get rid of this system. It's uh, very applicable. Uh, you you can uh, uh, install it uh, anywhere. It's uh, all the uh, air conditions in the market are uh, mostly uh, are mostly vapor compression uh, systems, and in near future, the, the, the moving forward is uh, is uh, the is a system which do not use refrigerant at all. That's gonna that's the future. But in near future, uh, we can improve the quality of the refrigerant to limit our GHG emissions. But uh, that system is going to stick with, uh, with us uh, in the near future.
who is environmentalist, uh, he wanted to know that which one is better way to represent efficiency, a sear or ear, and why? So sear is the seasonal uh, efficiency. It gives you the average uh, value over the over the whole uh, heating or cooling season. Uh, on the other end, ear is uh, is 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 uh, is a value which is uh, which we got in a very specific conditions. Uh, I'll, I'll use the analogy again of uh, of a car mileage. So you can get the car mileage uh, in a city uh, kilometers uh, per liter. How many kilometers you can ride your car in a city, and you get the car mileage on a highway. Definitely on a car on a highway you'll get the best mileage. Uh, but if you are a city driver, you cannot rely on the highway mileage because which is uh, good. Uh, but you have to see where you need. So mostly domestic homeowners, they go for the SEER readings, uh, which is, uh, is is more reliable readings. Here is is good in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the equipment uh, standpoint of view that how the equipment is doing as compared to other equipment. But, uh, you know, you you get uh, the real performance when uh, you are on a field. So, SEER gives us a, uh, uh, the efficiency rating on the field. Uh, thank you very much. Well, let me make a correction because the the questions was uh, transferred to me was with the name of Nemal Pereira. Uh, basically, wrongly mentioned as uh, Bhutan. I'm sorry, sir, Mr. Nemal Pereira. Uh, let me again correct. He's from Sri Lanka. So let's move to our last question because uh, we are already ahead of our time. Uh, it's basically a broader question, but I will try. I will request you to be brief and shorter way uh, answer it. The question is that uh, keeping in view the uh, temperature conditions and uh, energy resource, so the the energy which we use for heating and space space heating and water heating in this region is uh, with. Uh, where the natural gas is available is normally through natural gas or if somewhere if there is only electricity dependent then biogas or bio uh, masses are used along with electricity so and at the same time uh, the, uh, the there is a good solar radiation available in this region solar is to be tapped which unfortunately are not being tapped the way they are they were supposed to be so what model or sort of design you can recommend or propose uh, for uh, uh, heating uh, space heating and water heatings uh, in in economical and op optimized manner so i believe when you are you talking about a region you are talking about uh, sark region right yes. uh, I, I believe Dr. Vakas, uh, he would have answered uh, that question, uh, you know, in a, in a good way. Uh, I've been in North America from last eight years, and I started my career in uh, HVAC uh, here in North America. I'm not very well aware of the situation in, uh, in South Asia. However, I've lived in, uh, in, in, in Pakistan for about 10, 15 years, but, uh, but uh, actually 25 years, uh, but uh, but I'm not uh, I'm not feeling comfortable to to exactly answer that question. Uh, well, Vakas, sorry, but uh, Dr. Adil Vakas is not with us. Anyways, uh, no issue, Tan. Yes, you are right. Uh, the all uh, the conditions and the environmental conditions and the energy resource approaches everything is different part of a different from both region so with this uh, we will thank you uh, for you
your energies uh, thank you very much mr okas and i'm really sorry to all the participants if i missed any question i'll try to answer that later through email uh, that they have given in their uh, registration stage so with this we end this session and uh, i once again thank you mr okas so ladies and gentlemen let's move to our uh, conclusion session uh, after listening to the experts um, it can be uh, said that the path to the future of air conditioning involves the development of a cohesive set of solutions that are interdisciplinary uh, and collaborative direct emissions reductions through a transition to low dwp that's global warming potential refrigerants are high priority as is the continued pursuit of cost effective efficiency improvements however in leaders these activities in correct uh, in concert with uh, the other many available avenues will have to the most success projected air conditioning growth in the coming decades particularly in developing nations in hot climates highlights that additional need to pursue cooling load reductions waste heat recycling and carbon intensity reductions regenerative compression technologies at the intersection of energy efficiency and gwp reduction provide potential value for both direct and indirect emission reduction opportunities as one important piece of long term solution reduction in conditioning related emissions requires a comprehensive strategy based on international collaboration domestic policy action and and support from private and businesses ultimately success will require collaboration and active participation by a broad array of stakeholders with this i may like to conclude our webinar thank you everyone for attending today's webinar we had listened to some excellent presentation delivered by our distinguished presenters from sarc member states and other regions around the globe all presentations will be available on sarc energy centers website with very shortly we would love to hear from you any suggestion and comments for further improvement plus any suggested topic of your interest on which you want us to arrange future webinars we would gladly do that with me with this me signing out thank you again for joining us today and looking forward to see you next time bye bye